Welcome, welcome back to Photography Schoolhouse. I'm Kerry Allen, and we're back for Creative Camera Part Three. Uh, hope Part Two. We had some really good results from those sessions, but for those who do a series of high-quality images that are unique enough to separate yourself from the general population of people with cell phone cameras and everything else. It's professional, we want to elevate our, our style, we want to elevate our products. So this isn't about art so much as it is about developing products that we can sell in the typical portrait studio. So in the first two ones we were kind of covering special wardrobe and, and whatnot, uh, but tonight we're, the subject is going to be just a standard portrait but done in a way that is clearly above what somebody would be able to do. Now part of that of course is in the retouching which you're not going to see tonight but if you're a gold member and you watch where I post the recording of this the end results will all be posted there so you can see the kind of the final uh, image as I think it should be presented to the customer. So we're here with Natalie our model and uh, for those of you who have followed us over the past, Natalie's been here for about five years, and I don't think you could count the number of these broadcasts that she's done. So it's always great to have her here, and uh, welcome. So as usual, let me just reach over here for a second. I have prepared my notes for tonight. With most shoots, as you know, if you follow series I like to be prepared because sometimes when I'm in a shoot my mind goes blank I don't know why some kind of stage fright or whatever so if I've got sample poses I always uh, know where I'm going next and it makes me look more confident um, to the paying customer so we have a chat window which I can't see right now but by all means please uh, type into the chat window any questions that you have. That's the whole point of us being live is that uh, we can interact. So we'll be monitoring the chat window and uh, answering any questions that come up. So with that, let's get started. So I'm just going to do a couple of test shots just to start us off. See how our lighting is going because we haven't fine-tuned the lighting yet. And no flash. That didn't work. Looks a little dark. And it's still a little dark. That big light go. Okay. That's better. Something wasn't firing. So right now, the lighting that I have is... Uh, Marianne, can it point to the big umbrella? Yes. Just swivel. Thank you. Whatever camera can see it. So behind this curtain that we've hung is a great big huge seven foot umbrella silver interior. It's got a softening baffle over the front of it, plus we're firing it through the sheer curtain, so it's like a double baffle. The whole idea of this is to reproduce daylight as close as we can get it. And because uh, there's still nothing like daylight for taking, for taking portraits. So that's what I'm trying to do. Now the problem is, of course, on the opposite side of the room, we have our black out curtains to stop the ambient light from coming in the studio. And that means that we're going to get very little reflection coming back from that side. So that's going to be the debate as to whether or not we need a fill light or whether the, uh, uh, the one dish is going to do it for us. 
let me just check the histogram. The histogram on this looks pretty darn good. It's just about perfect. And I am seeing, of course, some very subtle um, shadowing, but the... Just let me look at this closer on the camera back. My question with her hair is, do we have really good detail in the darkest part of her hair? Hair light's not what? That would be part of the problem. Well, it's definitely firing, but if you wouldn't mind adjusting the position of the hair light. So it doesn't hit her on the legs so much. More on the hair. Okay, let's try that. Getting a little something. Yeah, that'll be all right. Natalie, if you come forward on the sofa a little bit. So we can do a whole series of these shots right from this. All we're using is a love seat and an armrest. And there's a lot that we can do just with this. So uh, the really... The real point of flow posing is to be able to go from one pose to another without a lot of maneuvering. So this might be just the position of the arms, uh, the position of where she's looking. Um, generally, in this kind of photography though, I like eye contact with the camera. This isn't photojournalism like you might do on a wedding, and this isn't art photography where they're looking off camera. We want that eye contact. That's part of the idea of a, a portrait, in my opinion. So let's take another shot. So the first, for the first one, uh, yeah, um, drop the arm. Yeah, just your wrist is kind of limp, hanging over the edge. A little bit uh, straighter in the back. Good, good. And we'll do one last... Check of the lighting. Yep. Well, that didn't work. See, that actually is pretty good, but let me check the histogram. It might actually be a little hot. It is. So I'm going to cut down a little bit. One more test. That's a little bit better. Now, I do have... Is this light on? Yes. Is it firing? That's all right. Yeah, that's not working right. And now that's not talking to us. Still looks a little hot on the cheek, so I'm going to cut this down even more. Oh, that's the keeper right there. That's the one. <laughs> Shooting her mouth. Come on, light. It's the big dish. There's the big dish is flashing. Okay, so what I want you to do for this is turn your shoulders a little bit more at an angle like that. Now turn your head back like so, the wrist draping over like that. Perfect. Turn your head, touch, touch this way. And maybe uh, I've got you leaning back too far, a little straighter. Let the head drift this way. Good, good. Nice. Now, I'm just going to have you bring the other hand around, kind of cross your right hand, no, on this side, both hands, the right hand under, and it's going to be kind of like a cross at the wrist. 
more like that. Bring that elbow back so it's not covering so much. And you can actually swivel your whole body towards this side now instead of the opposite side. It's all right. It's not going to break. I've sat on it. If I can sit on it, anybody can. Okay, cross at the wrist, like so. Now, just leave, bring your right hand up to the face, but just the edge of the hand. Like so. Perfect. The monitor in the studio is actually just a television set, which makes the images look very contrasty. Um, and what I'm not happy with here is the light that's falling in the background. So what I want to do is move this light, swing it around the other way so it shoots less on the background and more on our model. Yeah, just push it. It'll go. And then, yeah, we've got to feather it as much as we can off the background. Let me test that. Where is it getting that light from? Turn that light off for a second. Where is that light coming from? Can you kill the video? It shouldn't be the video light. No, not yet. Not till I figure out. Okay, um, let's feather the softbox so it's less towards the background and more towards me, if you know what I mean. Getting better. Even more if you can. Like you're trying to point it at me. Okay, let's see how that's going. Wow. Okay, that's better. Background's way down. Now let's kick in the fill light again. The trouble with big umbrellas is the light isn't very controlled. It'll basically go all over the place. Is that fire? Let's take it at two and a half. Okay, let's go with that. Let me check the preview on the camera. The histogram says a okay. Actually, the histogram says it's a bit dark. We'll open up a bit. All right, there we go. Okay, so continuing on with the posing then, all from pretty much the same position. So three poses, just changing the uh, arm position. So it's, well, we took some time playing with the lights. Uh, this actually, in the studio, should only take a minute or so. So what we're going to do is have you move to a different position totally. And I think where we're going to go, let me just check my shooting guide. Actually, there's a couple more we can do just where you are. Actually, that's the same as the first one. So what I'm going to do then is move you off more to the edge. And you're going to be kind of sideways towards Dave. 
and bring one knee, bring your right leg up, your right foot up onto the sofa, like that, and then nice and straight in the back and lean forward to that knee. Dave's going to re-aim the hair light. And that one arm, yeah, get comfortable there. No, you're looking at the TV. Gotcha. Mm, shouldn't matter too much, but we could, yeah. And let's go even lower. Really, the fill light should be about the same height as the model, technically. And uh, let's kill the hair light for a minute. Getting some really sharp accents on her face from the hair light. So I'll just take it out totally and see what we get. Okay, we're going to go with that. But you see, the one thing we are not getting is a nice sparkle in the eyes. So we're going to bring that light down even more. Try and catch her eyes. And then, yeah, tilt it back up like so. Oops, of course the flash didn't go. So that's better. I've got catch lights in both eyes. Yeah, I can give you a little more if you want. Yeah, okay. Just don't want to hit that backdrop. The backdrop's already bright enough. Yeah. No? He's good. So, okay, let's bring that arm uh, just in front, kind of resting on your leg, nice and straight in the back, and then leaning forward to your knee. Let's bring your elbow down. It looks too awkward there. Bring your forearm down so it's just below the knee. You know what I mean? Like, rest your forearm. That's on top. Now bring it down like that. You actually make, yeah, that looks more comfortable. Let your head drift more to the camera. Keep coming, keep coming. Turn this way. It's good. Now you can do just, I'll show you some alternate poses. You can just, uh, Prop one hand up like this middle one, the girl in the white. Oops. Okay. Different position now. I'm going to try the uh, the harder one first. You're actually going to be sitting on the floor, which is not so bad for her and really lousy for me. I'm going to get back so I don't want to knock anything over. So you can use this as a guide. It's probably easier to me trying to explain it. So without, let me just see if this is working. Kind of working. Dave's lowered the fill light in case you didn't notice that. Um, or a couple, a little, yeah. Her hair is very full and long. So let's we'll see if we get a little kicker going on here. Hmm. 
Let's see how that's working. Yeah, that's good. The fact that she's a little bit further forward is very, very good. So it makes the hair light work like a hair light. Okay. Actually, I like that one where the light didn't fire. It was kind of cool. It's odd how that sometimes works. Okay, let's just change your arm positions around. Use that as a guide. Okay, let's try this. I'm going to give Dave a chance to shoot a little bit and then uh, maybe while he's getting ready, slip on one of the other tops, one of the colored ones. And then if there are any questions, let me handle those. Yep, yep, while Dave's getting set up. Um, can you see them again? There was kind of a coral one. Let's go with this this one, whatever color that is, kind of bluish, purplish. Yes, and I don't know if you can get to them, though. Uh, they're trapped behind something. Well, let's try one where we don't need scissors. And then Mary Ann can maybe hunt down the scissors. So which one? This one's like Yeah, let's try that. It's a good color. Now, you know what we didn't do that we were going to do is dig out those fire wire cards or cables. And uh, totally spaced on that. The fire wire cables. She had one here. This, what color is that? Bluish, purplish. Violet. Violet. They have a name for everything. Maybe tuck one foot under your other knee, like that. Yeah, he's not tethered. I got my reading glasses on. Gut? Let me tell you about gut. I could export gut to a third world country.
Now when we're sitting in what I call my shooting chair, we're actually shooting down a little bit at Natalie, but for this kind of uh, work, that works for me. It actually, for the customer, it lifts their face up a little bit, so if they are struggling with a double chin, it helps reduce all that. where you are and just a little bit of a lean into just a little. All right. That's one problem I don't have an answer for. Yes, 212. If you can, please post in the gold member area the finished images along with the starting images. Yep. Now, something like this, I'm not going to do um, really wacky retouching on some skin softening, um, making sure the exposure is good, but it would just be, you know, pretty, pretty simple stuff. Not like some of the boudoir stuff we've done where we do a lot of toning, um, kind of artistic effects. Um, for portraiture, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. So, let's move on. We're going to have you go to a totally different pose. There are going to be a series of lying down poses on your tummy with your head up towards the big umbrella. And we've got to get you back far enough that the armrest doesn't shadow your face. Yes, it is. Your body is longer than the sofa, so you got to, uh, if you scrunch down and kind of put your knees up there, and then bring uh, your upper body more towards me, so you're kind of at an angle like that. Let's just try that while we adjust the lights. See, that's pretty darn good right there. I wouldn't even change too much. You don't like that one? No, I do. Oh, you do like that one. It's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. That's beautiful. The hair light's uh, going down, further down low, and it's working really good. Yeah, actually, the hair light's in the perfect position, so you kind of have to call it a shoulder light right now. Good, good, good. Hold that. Keep that going. Yeah, see, we're getting some shadow from the armrest, so while I like the pose, it's a lighting problem. Unless we lowered that even more and came in from a lower position. If it'll go lower now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bring your chin down a little bit. Like your, yeah, more like that. That should lighten up your face. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's got it. We got good catch lights in both eyes. No, it's okay. I think we're fine right where it is. Okay, let's bring you back up a little bit higher. Yeah, something like that, yep. Perfect. Maybe in a bit higher on the arm. Yep. Nice.
No, I kind of like the way it's working. The lighting's working. Um, guest 212, that's Keith. Aren't you Keith? That's Keith. I know it's Keith. Got a point. We can try that. Let's bring this end of the sofa out so we're the light from the umbrella hits her more in the face. You just get a little ride, a little bit more. Keep it coming. It's a hard position for her to be in. How tall are you? Five nine. I'm going to get in a little bit closer, and this is good. Okay, I like that pose. Um, let's look for any variation that we can do with the hands, although I think we've kind of got that covered. There's more along this line. If I'll just pass this to you so you can see. Now, I want to talk about skin tones. Normally I tell customers to bring long sleeve. This is a cap sleeve. And lately I've been changing my opinion. I like the cat sleeve, the cap sleeve. Particularly in this case she has tattoos, which she probably doesn't mind showing. And notice how in this last shot it's kind of framing her face a little bit. One arm is pointing, it's like a leading line right to her face, and the other arm is almost presenting a frame. So I don't find that the skin of her arms are distracting. I think it's aiding the picture right now. Nice, nice, nice. Let's try changing that hand position a little bit. Yeah, like, like so. I'm shooting with a 24 to 105 lens, um, and I'm zoomed in right at 105, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think I would need to go to a longer lens. The other thing I like to do, of course, is keep in mind that people have a tendency to order 8x10s, and 8x10 you have to crop from a standard digital camera, so I don't mind shooting loose so that I can crop it in post-production and final delivery. That's good. Good, good, good. If only the lights would flash. Bring that elbow back just a touch. Nice. Okay. Dave, you want some of this series? No, it's just Keith. I got him. We never mic Dave. We should probably mic Dave in the next episode. Although he doesn't talk a lot. Yeah, muttering would be okay. How would I get to be a damn slave? Let me shoot, let me shoot. Yeah. No, it's not that kind of show. Natalie, uh, you can all send her a congratulations. She just graduated university. Four years of university and one year of college. 
and she's finished and she's celebrating. that for a girl who's so physically fit to be in pain by lying down? Because she's bending her body the way it's not <laughs> supposed to be bent. Can I do this? Yeah, yeah that's going to work. Okay, yeah, I want to stay there. Or relax for a second. It's not. Yes, it is. He says he's celebrating with you. What's her degree in? She's got a double major in. Geography and Indigenous Studies, double major. So she's not just pretty, she's smart. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, guys. Okay. The one where you were lying on your back for a second, I just want to see how that pose worked out. I think it looks pretty good. Rolling your side a little bit to the camera. And lift your head up just a touch. Good. Now down, somewhere in between, right there. Okay. Now, there's one other series I want to go to, and we're going to need that rolling table. For this, so I have to dig out the table. Where is she going to work now? She's taking a break. She wants to travel for a while. She's only like 23, 23 years old. Uh, right, she's going to use it as a posing stool or a posing uh, device. So lean forward onto that. Now, maybe a touch high for you. Let's see how this is working. Yep, height's too low. 
And also, it's hitting the backdrop too much again. It's too bright in the backdrop. No, I think it'll work now. kind of cool. Let's try something. Marianne, can you grab the uh, reflector right there? I'm able to bring it around a little more. So I just want to see how this is going to work. Let's kill that light for a minute and then the reflector is going to come in on that side and just swing it out of the way. No, this way probably. We may be swinging it back in a minute. So let's see how this goes with the specular. It's not really the fill light that's lighting the backdrop, it's still that big umbrella. Okay, I can, uh, I can make a little adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, let's see how that goes. That's a little better. So what's happening with just using the reflector is we're creating a large, shadowy, very dark area right in front of her, which isn't going to work for us. So we're going to go back to the fill light. Scratch the reflector. Is it <laughs> back to the fill. See, the uh, fill light we're using is a strip light with an egg crate on it, so it really should be fairly good directional light. No, sit up. That's a little better, yeah. What's that power at? 2.5. Let's go to 3. Warp factor 3. And see, whoops, of course it didn't flash that time. So we are getting more light in the front, which is good. That light is firing, right? Yep. You want a little more? Yeah. I'll give you a little more power. More power. More power. I don't think that light is flashing. No, I think it's all the other lights. It's flashing. Of course, none of them flash then. Okay. Yeah, now down a bit. Trouble with wireless is sometimes it just doesn't flash. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. You just did the pose I was reaching for. Good, good, good. Sometimes the accidents are the best shots, are really good shots. No, I think that's good. Um, we had the one arm down horizontal, the other arm up. I think we did that one. Kind of cradling your neck a little bit. Under the hair, maybe. 
Yeah, I like that. Just want to check the histogram. Histogram says it can be pretty dark. What I've found as I've gone through lighting over the years is I used to be a big advocate of totally light, using a light meter to set the stage. Um, now I find that I'm not using my light meter hardly at all and just basically using the histogram to make sure that we're in the right zone. And then just by looking at the picture, do I like the way the light is falling? Are we getting catch lights? Um, now, although we have a big screen TV in the studio right now for us to see the previews, don't normally do that during a real session because customers will just look at the TV. Okay, try and, uh, yeah, if you were straighter in the back and kind of angle to this strip light a little bit. There we go. Yeah, you see how that's really opened up those dark areas. Good. You want some? Next time, I promise, we're going to tether Dave's Hasselblad. We got the software installed. We got Everything going, we just didn't hook up the cable. Shoulders towards the, the light a little bit. This way? This way? Yeah. And then the same thing? Or? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, wrap up with one last top change. Marianne, cut the tags off this for you. Okay, 
because I'd like to see that color, although I really like the color you're wearing, but let me just add some variety. You might as well stay and start and then oh, can't read the TV from here. How many megapixels is your camera and this camera? Well, I'm shooting a Canon 6D, which I think is roughly 20 megapixels. And Dave is shooting a uh, digital Hasselblad, which is what, 30, 39, 39 megapixels. My standard image is about 20 by 30. Yeah, Dave likes to print large. He's got a wide format printer. Does a lot of 20 by 30s or 24 by 36. I get my uh, enlargements done through uh, with Dave. Um, nope. Bound to make us happy. Um, in the real world, the uh, the regular world, you know, most people are ordering smaller than that. You get the uh, some gallery wraps and whatnot that are. 20 or 30 or larger, but uh, I have no trouble getting large prints out of my 60. Yeah, I'm going to take a few and just I want to see that color. Is that a color smack backdrop? No, nope. Hank. Uh, the, yeah, use the table for a minute. Um, back to Hank. Uh, no, it's not a color smack. It is a 10 by 20 foot custom made canvas that I had painted in North Carolina. And uh, it's a kind of a permanent fixture because it's so big and heavy. It hangs here all the time and then we put other things in front of it. And I, it's not that I wanted to use this backdrop for this particular shoot today. It's more out of laziness than anything else. Um, I do have a lot of color smacks, and we, we could change this to just about anything in a few seconds. But that's uh, what we're shooting on today. So let's try this. Yeah, let's try both arms on the table again. And of course, one light didn't go. Now no lights went. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that color. It's very vibrant. That's a good point. Um, I've been talking a lot lately on uh, Photography for uh, Schoolhouse Facebook group. And if you're not a member of the Facebook group, just look up Photography Schoolhouse. And we have a Facebook page and we have a Facebook group um, about color theory. And of course, if you are familiar with color theory, uh, kind of the color of her skin in the shot that's on screen right now and the color of her top are complementary colors. Blue across from warmish kind of orangey. Um, so that I think is a really good part of portraiture is working with color theory. I was experimenting, I posted one a few days ago kind of just experimenting with different parts of the color wheel. Um, a big believer in color theory so I think it should be part of our portraits. I need you a little bit taller. Good, good, good.
Okay, so although we took an hour just now, in real life that probably shouldn't take much more than uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And out of that, this wouldn't be everything that we do on a shoot, but it would be a, a good section of the shoot. 10 minute section where we would easily get half a dozen images out of that that are potential sales for the customer. Um, but in, in itself, it's not the way I would shoot a complete portrait session of somebody just booked a portrait. And with that, if there's any last minute questions, here we are. Hello, camera two. Camera one, there we are. I'm getting signals from off camera, and I don't know what they mean. Don't you hate it? It's like baseball, you know, they give you all these signs, and I don't know what they're talking about. Morse code, Morse code yep. Okay, well, we're going to wrap this up. I am going to post the video to the gold member section. Give me a day or so because I'm going to work up the images too. And as somebody asked earlier, I am going to post both the raw straight out of camera image and after I retouch the way I think it should be shown to the client. Uh, with that, we're going to wrap up uh, creative camera number three. We'll be back, of course, with number four. And the theory, as always, is creating unique things for our customers that set us apart from the amateur. So have a good night, everybody. See you next time.